Hello, hello, and welcome to my Endless Space 2 guide. The guide for beginners, the guide for people who just want to learn the game, um, and get off the ground and understand how to enjoy their purchase. Um, this guide is guide number 9, and the topic is ships. Um, I wanted to merge this guide with the previous one, guide number 8, which talked mainly about uh, module slots for uh, weapons, armor, support, and squadrons. Um, but I didn't want the video to be too long, so I decided to give it its own category. Um, I could have started with either the ships or the weapons. I wanted to explain the weapons first before I went into the actual ships itself. Um, so in case you were wondering about why I didn't go into more detail about certain things in the previous guide, this is the detail that you were you deserve. Um, so first of all, when you... So when you research the tech for a new ship, it will automatically give you, you know, a design, a basic design that, you know, the game just decides to give you, and it uses very minimal slots. So when I unlocked the um, carrier type for the Sophons, it gave me this. This is my carrier ship. Of course, it only uses all basic slots. It doesn't even use up that one, so it's not as efficient as can be. Um, if you want to just use it, you can. If you have a pretty big technological advantage over the other empires, then go for it. You know, but I always prefer to customize and kind of create my create my own that's as efficient as possible and that works with my whole fleet composition. Um, but before we get into that, right, um, I'm just going to start off with describing quickly all the different ships. So, um, I'm just gonna start here. Uh, this is the Kilo class, it's specific to the Sophons, but each empire has the exact same. It's got two ships, two tiers of ships that are focused on attack, two tiers of ships that are focused on support slash defense, and then one tier, uh, just one ship, really, for the carriers, and then that could be upgraded. But um, in this instance, I'm talking about different ships. So this is the Kilo class, it's the first tier, of attackers so it it says here what it primarily what it targets in terms of enemy ships um, yeah that's about it um, the bonuses though is really kind of the important part right so over each ship there will be bonuses specific to that one so focus fire with the flotilla to quickly eliminate ships and then offensive boosting uh, damage on weapons you know so that's kind of the benefit, you know, you still get more slots um, than a defensive ship for this tier, but you also get this little bonus. So here, the DECA class, this is the tier 1 uh, protector, it's upgraded, so it has these little things, it has more slots to work with, it's the upgraded class. Um, protector, you can see what it prioritizes, attackers and hunter ships, um, guardian, attracts fire, defensive plus 10% on plating and shields which is these guys right and this is an interesting thing to note that's kind of yeah I have that unlocked so I don't know when you get this module it gives you a flat value so increased chance to be targeted 10 I don't it, it's not percentage based I don't think it is and I don't know how much this gives you but it's interesting to note that even though this ship might not be a, a primary target for the enemy. Other defensive ships will not focus this one. But if I have a guardian, this this guardian tree, and maybe one of those, then maybe the other defensive ships will target this guy. So it's something to kind of think about when composing your fleet. That's the colonizer. Not much to say about him. Um, one thing you can, one thing that you can do though, is you could because the base model. I don't think the base model I think comes with an engine and a colonize slot just for the flag um, but you can strap another engine onto it or a stronger engine and it'll go farther uh, bu -bu -bu. next is the exploration vehicle um, one little tidbit to note with this is that um, it'll I'm pretty sure it always comes with at least well it always comes with a weapon slot at least one and then it always comes with at least one um, support thing because that's where you gotta put the drones. I think it's two every time, but I'm not sure. But the interesting tip to add with this one is that 
it'll start off like that in order to reduce the production costs right if I want it to be quicker to build it's it doesn't cost a lot it's 20 industry but if you want to reduce the cost and get more exploration ships out there you know he's not gonna be doing much fighting anyway so you can just take the gun off of him and it'll be faster to make it save two turns you might take one you know Ooh. oh no 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 uh, next is the Giga ship. So this one is technically called the Hunter. It's basically just an upgraded form of the um, other attack vessel, Kilo. Right? It, it has the same purpose. It, its targeting is the same. Um, it's just a step above. It has more. Um, it has stronger base stats, and it has more slots to work with. Uh, if you look at the bonuses, though, it's there's focus which is the same as before and targeting systems which I think the other one was 10% and this one is a 20% boost let's just confirm that yeah so 10% versus giga giga 20% so that's kind of the upside to choosing it but you know at the same time this costs three command points and that one only costs one so maybe you want to stack a, a lot of small ships maybe you only want one or two of the larger hunter class that's up to you to decide <laughs> next is the PETA PETA class um, it is just like the hunter the one that I just showed you this one is the step above for the defensive support ships um, let's show that so it's got more slots to work with support slots armor slots you can see all that same bonus as before guardian attracts fire and defensive 10% which I think actually is the same okay I didn't actually know that I thought it was yeah so for both this and the other ship it's a 10% boost on plating and shields so it is actually the same in that respect but the stats right are still stronger and again three command points it costs um, if you're not sure what command points are um, in a future guide I think it's actually yeah the next one the next one I'm gonna be making it will talk about command points and how you want to maximize it and uh, other stuff obviously and lastly yada class yoda class yada it's gotta be yada uh this is the carrier so uh initially before squadrons were added to this game which I'm not actually sure how long ago that was i think it was a couple of months ago um initially they were called carriers still but they had no slots for squadrons oh i don't even have it unlocked yet that's embarrassing um, before it was just weapon slots. They didn't ha they didn't have those chevrons so <clears throat> But now that that's been added, you know You can actually put squadrons on the ships and it makes a lot more sense because the carrier you can see here the targeting priority You know focuses other carriers secondaries attack hunters yada yada But the squadron the bonuses are all focused on the squadrons right plus 10% health on squadrons plus 10% damage on squad on uh, on squadrons of course the stats here the base stats are stronger so it does have a lot of HP um, so you know the argument could be made instead of putting guns on the ship just put a bunch of squadrons on it and then put the guns on this guy for instance you know um, the other thing to note though this slot is bigger this is a heavy mount so whatever weapon I put on this cost of it is doubled but so does the DPS um, I believe this also does apply if you put a squadron module on it but I'm actually not sure I can't test it because I don't have it yet um, I think I'll fact check that in just a second though okay so I just very quickly researched the tech for squadrons it only took me a turn because I'm playing with the Sofons um, so I got these guys here mm -hmm. so you can just strap them on like that as you saw in the previous video Right, I was, trying to, I was trying to remember what I wanted to test. Okay, all right. So the heavy mount slots, it actually, it's not even available for squadrons. I didn't realize it. It's, um, it's only for standard weapons and then the planet destroyer, which I haven't unlocked yet. Um, but that comes, that comes later. Um, yes, you can only put it in the smaller slots. So there you go, that, that checks that. Okay, and the last little bit that I want to explain 
Um, let's get out of there. Nice to meet you, Horatio. Here, here's a good example. Okay. Um, right. So, all my ships here, except for this one, which I just, um, I wanted to, I'll, I'll keep it. I, I wanted to keep it just to show you guys in this video. Um, but all my other ships, you can see that the labeling is a little bit weird. You know? Um, LH2 Attack 3. That seems like a weird way to, you know, go about it. But the way that I describe it is... This is, this is how I categorize, this is how I label my ships. Because you might say, what's the point of labeling your ships? I'll just give it a cool name, you know? And um, that's, what I, that's what I used to do. But then it got kind of confusing about which was which, and if you even look at the ships right now, this number three, um, this number three means how many times I've changed the modules on the ship and upgraded them. So it could get a little bit confusing when I have destroyer three, des destroyer four, you know, hunter six, you know, and it made me when I was trying to maximize my fleet efficiency and when I had multiple fleets and I'm trying to replenish ships that I lost you know it just got a lot easier for me to just label exactly so this is my system you know you you don't have to do it I'm just saying this is how I do it and you know if you think it's okay you can use it it's up to you um so enough beating around the bush here it is so here's a name for my hunter class that I have going here so the L represents long or short range um I have both missiles and lasers, so long range. Um, the H represents uh, how I'm working defensively, what my focus is. Um, H represents hull versus S for shield. So I have two uh, two slots on hull and one on shield. So I didn't want to completely stack it, but the focus is um, on hull. Ba -ba -ba. Sorry, I got distracted. And two just represents the tier. So I mentioned just a second ago that sure this worked. But this is essentially the first tier of the defensive uh, support ships, right? And then this one, and then this one is the second tier. So in my labeling sequence, you know, long range, shield based, um, tier two. Because this is the second tier. And then for this one, I would just say long range, sh shield, sure, and then one for long range. Using caps is more pronounced. And then the last thing, pretty straightforward defend or attack. Um, yeah, I, I, you know. Defend, attack, and then for the last one, obviously, I just write carrier. That's just pretty much how it goes. Let's get out of there. Um, and the last thing I kind of want to mention, I didn't need to exit, but the last thing I kind of wanted to mention was um, niche ship designs. Uh, so what I mean by that. So in my previous video, I talked about this, this module and how I like it so much, how it boosts uh, the move speed um, of the whole fleet. And then there's also this one, the Opex gear, which increases manpower. And I think there's another one too, which increases it by even more. Um, so later in the game, when I have more resources to work with and the galaxy spans a farther distance and I need to move people from A to B in not 20 turns, but I need them to be there in five turns. So what I like to do, and again, this is just me, Think, take it, leave it, whatever you want. You know, I'll put the standard engine on it, and then I will just stack it. I'm not gonna put any weapons on it. I don't want it to fight. I don't want to put any shields on it or hull plating because I don't want it to fight. But all this thing is gonna be doing is just be boosting the move speed of the entire fleet. So I got five of those, so plus five movement speed plus the initial four. Right. So what's the purpose of this, right? So let's say I'm fighting a battle, right? I've done some exploration. Let's say I'm fighting a battle over here. I'm invading these guys, you know, very possible. It's probably gonna happen soon. Uh, let's say I lose a couple of ships and I don't wanna push forward until my fleet is completely full again and 
full health. But, you know, if I build one or two of these uh, bigger ones, it's going to take them forever to get there. It's going to, you know, let's just, we can, we can plot a course right now. I can't even see it. Ten turns. That's, that's, that's unacceptable. So, if I just build a couple of these cheap thruster ships, air quotes, um, it could get them over there. Instead of ten turns, it could take two or three. You know, it depends on how many, <clears throat> depends on how many I have in my fleet. My current command point that I can handle is 24. So, potentially, I could have 21 thrusters, you know, because this guy takes three, and then just one of those, and then I'll just shoot him across, and then I'll, sh and then the thrusters will come back, and then they'll carry another one, and it'll just be back and forth, back and forth, you know, and that's, that's one way to do it. Another way that I like to do, um, especially with these long war of attrition, what the AI likes to do, what I've noticed is they will choose weapons and uh, certain module, I think there's some mod uh, support module slots they can use, they'll choose weapons and support modules that specifically kill crew manpower that you have on ships. Uh, so that means that it's going to take longer to invade someone, it, it might be unsuccessful, um, and it could really slow the advance um, of an invasion. So another thing that I like to do, matched with the thruster, again air quotes, ships I like to make one of these guys. I'll take the second tier uh, support module ship, and I'll put the standard engine on it. And you know, if I feel like I need it, I could even put a couple of those guys to boost the move speed. But generally, I will just strap manpower on it. So look at this, so just one of these guys has 3,450 manpower. It'll take a couple of turns depending on how much food you have and, you know, the improvements that you have in place to fill that ship up with manpower. But once that's done, you know, I could have just three of these guys, for instance. Um, sure, whatever, let's build them. Let's call them invaders. Sure, whatever. Um, I could have just three of those guys put, like, just a ton of thrusters on those guys, you know, and I'll have the main front the actual ships that do fighting i'll have them clear them out and then these invasion ships will come and they'll just entrench themselves and start a war of attrition and start sieging and um i don't know that's just that's just how i like to do it. i just wanted to mention kind of some sp specific ship designs that i've kind of learned over time and that you might choose to use if you so please